In this tutorial, I'm going to describe the CIG and Pilot best practices for software development and give you some ideas for how you might leverage some of the things we have learned in following modern software development practices for your modeling projects and research. CIG best practices cover both software development and training. For software development, there are three different standards. There are minimum standards that all codes hosted by or distributed by CIG are expected to meet. At the standard level, it defines a set of standards for CIG codes that they should be following. And then there is a target level, which are desired practices that developers should consider in defining long-term development priorities for codes developed within the CIG community. For training best practices, they cover uh, both tutorials and hackathons and other training for uh, users of software. The best practices for software development are shown uh, on the CIG website at the URL given at the top of the screen. The software development best practices cover a wide variety of issues, including version control, coding style, portability, testing, documentation, and user workflow. For the licensing, it must be open source software and with an open source license. Version control, at a minimum, this, all the source code must be under version control. This would be uh, generally using a Git repository. At the standard and target levels, we differentiate between maintenance and new development uh, with new development occurring in what we call feature branches uh, at the target level. In terms of coding, uh, best practices uh, at the standard level, we're specifying parameters at runtime. There's a development plan so users know what new features may come uh, be added. And um, you can add features without modifying the main branch of the code. Uh, at the target level, it includes uh, information about uh, re for reproducibility, in, which is called provenance. You have parallel access for inputs output outputs and checkpointing um, in terms of portability. At a minimum level of standard, the code builds on Unix-like machines with free tools using a portable build system. Um, at the standard and target level, we have portable configuration and building. We have uh, being able at the target level, the configuration isn't modifying files that are under version, under version control. You can have different builds using the same source code such as different compilers, different optimization levels. Uh, at the testing uh, set of standards, at a minimum, the codes are meant to have tests that verify that it runs properly. And these might be results of accuracy and or, and or performance benchmarks. At the standard and target levels, uh, this, the testing includes pass-fail tests to verify that the code runs properly. Um, and uh, the tests are definitely are generally done at different scales, such as unit testing to test small pieces of the code, verification of the physics via method of manufactured solutions. For the documentation, uh, at the minimum level, it includes installation instructions, description of the parameters, explanation of the physics, examples with input files. At the standard level, uh, they add in uh, add in requirements for workflow for research use, description of how to extend the code. Um, and uh, at the target level, guidelines on parameter ranges for which the code is designed, frequently asked questions, knowledge base, some way to keep track of uh, user questions. Uh, and then for user workflow in terms of, there's no minimum requirements at the standard level, um, it, uh, they're related to allowing assimilation parameters to be changed without rebuilding, uh, user-specified directories and file names for input and output, use of standard binary formats, and at the target level, at also including reproducibility by archiving the workflow. So you can see that uh, the minimum standards are relatively uh, sort of a bare minimum. Uh, they still may not, um, the user experience still may not be that great. At the standard and target levels, you're getting much better user experience in terms of documentation, uh, work, user workflow. And on the developer side of thing, the code is much more easier maintained uh, and supported. 
for pilots, we've uh, since the pilot development has strived to follow modern software development practice since its ex since its inception. Uh, we've tried to always have uh, portable software, built-in modularity, built-in extensibility, um, and follow all of the latest uh, uh, software development practices for using source code uh, version control. Uh, and we've modified, we started out uh, in the very beginning using Subversion. As Git became more popular, we switched to Git. We moved to uh, GitHub to have a, a central uh, repository that's available to users that tracks issues um, and so forth. Um, and one of the main underlying uh, practices that we've strived for within the pilot development is we want the code to be accessible to beginners. Um, so good documentation, good examples. Uh, the examples show uh, very simple and then they uh, gradually increase in complexity. Um, but we in catering to beginning users who don't want to impede advanced users. So advanced users can go in, they can extend the code, they can run very sophisticated simulations, much larger complicated simulations um, to uh, address uh, important research problems. Some of the things that uh, we do is we try to follow all of the CIG standard and target best practices this in, uh, and I'm just going to highlight a few of the areas here. In terms of the Git workflow, you can see uh, diagrams and details in the developer menu, along with links to additional documentation on various Git workflows. We differentiate between maintenance and new development. Um, and so this way we can uh, provide bug fixes while we continue to develop and add new features uh, independently. And uh, all changes are added in branches and merged into the main repository with using a uh, pull request. This is a, a Git terminology, but basically we add uh, chunks of changes to the code via pull requests. And so it allows all of our testing to be done in these branches and they don't get merged in until they are ready uh, to be part of the stable development tree. All of the pull requests must pass the automated test before being merged. These are building the code, running method of manufactured solution tests, running full scale tests, uh, as well as testing the document generation of the documentation and packaging. In terms of testing, uh, we do the test at the function level. Uh, we've uh, with pilot version three, we've added method of manufactured solutions to verify the implementation of the physics. And we do this not just uh, for a single discretization, but we vary the, the basis functions, we vary uh, the type of cells being used and so forth. So extensive testing to verify the implementation of physics in the code. And that's where we catch a lot of our uh, bugs related to implementation of the physics. We also have full scale tests that verify the output and the input. So that sort of verifies the full pilot simulation uh, workflow in terms of reading in a mesh, solving the problem, writing the output. Um, and then we also have community benchmarks, uh, primarily through the Southern California Earthquake Center. There's a very old suite of uh, quasi-static physical elasticity related benchmarks. Um, and then over the past 20 years, there's been a very large suite of, of dynamic rupture benchmarks developed. For portability, we provide binaries for Mac OS and Linux. Uh, the binaries and the code itself run on laptops. Uh, and then for large clusters, generally that requires building from source. And there's an installer for building uh, on clusters that can make use of the, the hardware and specialized libraries that are provided on clusters. We also have a Docker development environment that provides all the dependencies to allow someone who wants to get started extending the code um, to uh, get up and running very quickly. Um, we have a development plan uh, that is essentially an open collaboration with the community to identify priorities. Uh, and we'll discuss that uh, 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 in our workshops. And that's where we mainly engage the community as well as through uh, open forums. And uh, on our development plan, we're continuously evaluating the priorities. So it really is a dynamic, a document, we see opportunities, we get after, you know, in some cases, after we think about things for sometimes months, have additional discussions, we find that 
Certain features are actually quite easy to implement once we have the right formulation, uh, the right sort of design. Um, and so those maybe get bumped up in terms of priorities because we can get those done and the opportunity arises. In other cases, it's engaging the community to get uh, to learn what their priorities are as well as discussion and when there are pilot hackathons, it's members of the community deciding that they want to contribute. So that's sort of that's the background for CIG and pilot best practices. And here's, we're going to go over a couple ideas on things you might want to consider in your workflow, your practices for doing your modeling, um, and in general in uh, doing your research. And these are related to things that we have learned uh, in developing Pilot, uh, as well as discussions with other developers within the CIG community. The first idea is to use Git in your projects. Um, why would you want to use uh, version control in a modeling project? The first thing is reproducibility. Uh, Git keeps track of all the changes you made. The changes are annotated in individual commits, and you can go back in time to see what you do, you've done. Uh, the more commits you make, sort of the more steps you have in the undo. And you can sort of think of this as an infinite undo instead of just having, you know, what was the uh, the changes you made in your uh, editor within the last five minutes or since you started it up, you can go back days, months, even years to see uh, what the uh, what what changes have been made. Um, and uh, it all the get commits or where you, you sort of stage each individual changes allows you to document changes to files. So you can say why uh, you've changed something, you can um, annotate, you know. This is a fix. Uh, the previous results uh, are, um, are invalid. And so you have a, a documentation of the changes uh, that are uh, date stamped. And so you know exactly when things change in the repository uh, and when you know results before a certain date might have had some issues, results after a certain date are much better. Uh, Git also allows you to synchronize files across multiple computers with uh, backup in the cloud. Um, so uh, if you're using a laptop and, you, and you're also using a desktop or a cluster, uh, you can synchronize your input files, you can synchronize uh, your processing across multiple computers. Um, and this is also synchronizing files with collaborators. So you can uh, add multiple people to a repository um, and keep everything synchronized while also in working independently. Uh, and these idea of branches within uh, the Git workflow allow you to experiment an idea. And then you can just throw away or you can merge it back into the main development branch uh, that you're using. So it really gives you flexibility. Um, and when you're working on an idea, you, have, you don't have to just have the files on your computer. You can continue to synchronize across multiple computers. You can make those commits, annotate, and document those changes. So it's really a powerful way to keep track of what you're doing um, and continue to experiment and, and check things out. Um, an integrated development environment is generally uh, an editor that understands your programming languages. It usually allows you to interact with a terminal. Uh, in many cases, you can run debugging. You can uh, look at visualization. Sometimes they integrate with visualization packages, sometimes not. Um, but one of the main things that you, and you've probably seen this in many of our tutorials, is you see syntax highlighting for programming languages. Uh, so it gives you a, just visually, you can distinguish between comments uh, and what you're trying to do uh, for a variety of programming languages. It includes brace matching. So if you're trying to uh, uh, do work in C or some language where you have opening and closing braces allows you to quickly find those, make sure uh, they're matching appropriately. Uh, integrated developments are, um, are basically all integrated into Git. So you can make commits, you can pull from your repository. In some cases, you can even look at your repository all within your integrated development environment. Uh, they also provide support for linting, uh, which is a fancy name for it checks your syntax uh, in real time. Usually it highlights things where it may be finding issues. Uh, so, and in some cases it'll show you, oh, this variable has not been used. Oh, this variable is undefined, um, things like that. Uh, integrated development supports sophisticated editing. 
So uh, operations uh, of sort of changing code, changing variable names can be done simultaneously um, rather than uh, having to do a search and replace uh, across a file. Um, integrated development environments also are aware, because they're aware of the Git integration, they know what files are in your project. And so you can do search and replace across a project. Um, and this is extremely powerful and helpful um, in terms of, of keeping track of things. And you can jump around in files without having to walk, walk through uh, the, the file system hierarchy. So you can jump from one file to another if you know the name of the file. And in search and replace, you, you can usually search and go directly to those files and even the line numbers um, that have uh, what you're looking for. And in terms of sophisticated editing, basically all of the editors show the line numbers um, and so you, if, you know, if you're running pilot and you have an error or you, you're given a, a reference to a specific line and a specific file, you can very quickly jump to that line number in that file. Uh, some additional features that are uh, very important and useful for an integrated development environment is you can have uh, interactive remote collaboration. This includes not just looking at files and editing them simultaneously by multiple people, but also access uh, to a terminal to uh, interact with the operating system, move files around, look at additional files, run additional code and software. Um, and many integrated development environments are integrated with uh, Docker and SSH, uh, so it's a secure shell. So within Docker, you can be running in an integrated development environment and attached to a Docker container and interact with with the files inside that container as if those files were just on your local computer outside of the Docker container. Um, so this makes uh, development using Docker containers extremely powerful um, and you can actually be running on different operating systems than your own operating system. Uh, one of the tricky parts is, is that you know, 3D visualization within a Docker container uh, requires interaction between the graphics the libraries within the container and the graphics hardware outside the container. Um, so that can be very tricky and difficult to set up. SSH integration with these integrated development environments means that you can be editing files on a remote computer, uh, like your desktop or a cluster, and uh, it basically looks and feels like you're editing them on your local machine. Uh, so this is different then logging in and running an editor on that machine and having it display on your machine. Instead, you're using your local integrated development environment and it's just pushing the changes to those files in real time back and forth between your remote machine and your local machine. Here's just an idea of how you might lay out a repository for a research project. Here, I just made up a, a a fake project related to the 2019 Ridgecrest earthquake. Um, and so your repository, you may label it something like projects slash 2019 Ridgecrest. You would have a readme, you had multiple directories. You could have a modeling directory where you do all your modeling files. You have your papers, which are all the manuscripts that are associated with the project, your presentations from various uh, places all integrated within a repository. So all the work you might do on a project could be integrated into this repository. Um, and so that uh, this also gives you backup of that information uh, in the cloud. If you use a, a GitLab or a GitHub uh, a free repository, these repository, repositories don't have to be public. You can make them private and just share uh, with your immediate collaborators. Uh, you generally don't wanna put all of your big uh, input and output and intermediate results within the repository. So you might have directories within, say, your modeling uh, directory for the input, output, and scratch that uh, everything in those files um, would not be included in the repository, but you would have all of your input um, parameter files, your spatial databases for like a pilot type project, how you generated the mesh, you'd have notes and readmes, your utility scripts, scripts for visualization, plotting, um, pre-processing, post-processing, and so forth. Um, and so finally, uh, in terms of considering an integrated development environment, um, I strongly recommend one that supports a wide variety of programming languages. 
there's some that to support just one programming language like Python. Um, uh, but uh, for example, uh, some the ones I've listed here, Visual Studio Code, Atom, and Eclipse, they support a variety of programming language. So whether you're working with Python files, you can load up PyLeth parameter files, uh, look at documentation and Markdown, work with uh, LaTeX files, and they all show the syntax highlighting. They all work uh, with uh, in terms of showing uh, uh, various aspects like the markdown, it can show you whether your markdown is conforming or not to the standard, your Python, it'll show you errors. You can integrate uh, the Python debugger into the integrated development. If you're doing markdown or LaTeX, you can do previews. Um, so very powerful way to interact um, with a variety of different types of files, not just uh, programming. So we hope that uh, you'll consider uh, sort of a Git workflow and an integrated development environment when you do your modeling, um, mainly because it's more efficient uh, and it also uh, increases your reproducibility and your ability to collaborate with others.